This glorious thing right here is the Zyber 8G from Tiny Chip Hub. And I made a video about this thing already, so we're not gonna go through a full review, but if you wanna know all about the device, there's a link to that video in the description below. But today, we're gonna overclock this thing because in the last video, I said that I would, and I am a man of my word. Just check this thing out. This thing is beautiful. Now, Boss Coin made a video about this thing recently, and I love Boss Coin. I watch all of his videos. He's arguably the most popular and wildly successful Bitcoin mining influencer that exists. That's why he's raking in the big bucks. But he made a few comments in his last video that I don't quite agree with, and here is why. So he was saying this thing is overpriced and that you can get other devices with a higher hash rate for the same money. And while that's true, I think he's kind of missing the point on this device right here, because sure you can get something like an Avalon Mini 3, which is about the same price, and it does have a higher hash rate but it also uses six times the amount of electricity. So if you live in the UK where electricity is crazy expensive, or even in a state here in the United States where electricity costs are high, it doesn't make sense to have something that's using 800 watts. And so this thing is really cool, especially from an efficiency standpoint. And this is just a great device if you don't have 800 watts that you wanna burn because it gets insanely expensive to do so. So anyway, I just had to come to this thing's defense because I love it. And I own several devices that have a much higher hash rate than this, and I still love this device. It's just cool looking. It's almost silent, it looks amazing, and it works really well. So enough about all that. Let's put this thing through its paces and let's see what she's got. Okay, so here's the power supply we're gonna use for this adventure. This is a Meanwell LRS 350 12 volt variant. And this is the Mod 3 enclosure that I designed and developed. This is actually on my website. There's a free STL if you want to go and download it and print one of these things off. It's made to match all the rest of the stuff, like these GT stands I made and these Nerd QX++ stands I made. These uh, little polygon designs here, that's kind of my signature thing. I like it. It looks cool. It's different. It's unique. It's kind of fun. So anyway, I also sell these full kits if you want to buy it. But, you know, my whole goal with these things is to try to make cool stuff that's for free uh, that the community can enjoy. So if you have a 3D printer, you can make one of these and then you won't, you know, shock yourself with these hot terminals over here. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Let's crank this thing up and see what happens. Okay, so I made a quick adjustment here. I'm gonna use this Silverstone fan. I'm gonna prop it up like this. And the idea there is to keep the voltage regulator modules nice and cool. Now you've got this big ass cooler on the top. And it does a great job of keeping the chips cool, but it does not do much for the voltage regulator modules. And so. You've got these heat sinks, which help a little bit, but I've always thought if you could create some sort of bridge right here or like a 3D printed part, you could put a fan right here, keep the VRs a lot cooler and therefore run this thing a lot harder. So that's what we're gonna do, but I don't have a 3D printed part. So I'm just gonna prop it up like this. Got it kind of rigged up there. And I think having that airflow is going to prevent things like, you know, frying out the VRs or melting other components. A little airflow never hurt anybody. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm also gonna plug this into a NerdQX++ over here because that thing is running off of a different power supply. Now, this thing cranks out 350 watts and we wanna stay at or below that 80% threshold. And so that gives us 280 watts to play with. I'll probably go up to maybe 300 or something for this test, uh, even though that's pushing the limit a little bit. But I wanna make sure that no power is getting siphoned off from the fan, even though this doesn't use much. I don't know, the more power we have available, the better. So that's what we're gonna do. So here's the setup. Let's overclock this thing. Okay, so right now I've got the default settings in place. We're at 670 on the frequency. We're at 1190 as far as the core voltage. Now we're getting about 11 terahashes per second and our chips are nice and cool. So 51 degrees for group one and group two and the voltage regulator temperature is currently 53 degrees. Now we're consuming 176 watts. So we got lots of room to move. Let's push this thing a little bit and let's see what happens. So let's go over here to settings. Let's push this up to 1250 and let's push this to 800 and let's see what kind of results we get. So now we're at 13 terahashes per second. So we immediately got an increase in hash rate of about two terahashes per second. Our power consumption went way up. We're now at 229. We are at 56 degrees on ASIC temp one, 53 degrees on ASIC temp two. Our VRs are still nice and cool at 60 degrees. So we got more room to move. 13.3 right now. Let's see, we're at 800 and 1250. Let's push it up to 900, see what happens then. So now we're consuming 258 watts. Things are warming up a bit. ASIC temp one is 62. ASIC temp two is 57.6. And the VR temps are now 67 degrees. So we're getting about 14.7 terahashes a second. I think we still have some room to move. So let's push it a little further. 
So for this round, I'm gonna bump the core voltage up just a little bit to 1280. And I'm gonna put the frequency up to 925. And hopefully, hopefully it works. So now we're at 15.1 terahashes per second. So all eight chips are doing their thing. It's like if you had two Nerd QX Plus Plus devices at seven and a half each. It's basically how it boils down. Temps are getting a little bit hotter, so we're at 64 on group one. That's the first four chips. Group two is the second four chips. That's at 59.9. And our VR temp is 71 degrees. Now, as far as power consumption goes, we're now at 281 watts, which is right at that 80% threshold. So we really don't want to go much higher than that, but we're going to anyway, for the sake of research. We gotta do it, so let's push it a little further. We'll change the frequency to 950. See what happens then. Okay, so that pushed us up to 15.4 terahashes per second. Our ASIC temp for group one is 66 degrees, group two is 61 degrees, VR temp is 72 degrees. Now we're currently using 290 watts, so we probably don't wanna push any further than 300, but we got a little bit more room, just a little bit more room. So let's push it a little further. So we'll raise the core voltage to 1300 and the frequency up to 960. Just a little bit, just a tiny little bump. That really didn't do much, so let's go a little further. Let's go to 1,000. So now we're at 16 terahashes per second. We're using 313 watts. We're at 67 degrees for ASIC temp one, 61 degrees for ASIC temp two, 75 degrees as far as the VRs go. So we're doing well, it continues to climb. 16.3 terahashes per second. Again, that's like if you had a Nerd QX Plus Plus getting eight terahashes a second, well, two of them really. So we're way up there. These eight chips, they're cranking. They're doing their thing. They are hashing away. It'd be really cool to hit a block right now, by the way. That'd be kind of like the icing on the cake of this video here. We're at 314 watts. We're really, really pushing things. Should we go further? What do you think? Okay, let's do it. I really want to hit 17, guys. That's kind of my goal. I'd be really, really happy with 17. I'd be ecstatic if we got 18, but 17's my goal. But we're at 324 watts right now, so we're way over the limit of where I said I was gonna go. I don't think we should push it any further, uh, but we're going to, so let's do it. 17.2 terahashes per second. I bumped it up just a little bit, so now we're at 1080 and 1320. I'm using 343 watts. This is a 350 watt power supply. I should've got a 600 for this test, because I think there's still room to move but I'm limited only by the power supply. And I don't wanna push it any further because I don't wanna burn out my power supply. I don't wanna cause any problems. I'm happy with the 17 terahashes a second. I think that's good. We're gonna to have to get a 600 and continue this test because I really do believe that it's capable of 18, maybe 20, I don't know. Uh, this is great though. I'm very excited by these results. It's good stuff all the way around. This is why I love doing tests like this. You know, I'm probably never gonna be the next Mr. Beast making content about home mining. Most people have no idea what this stuff is or what it's about, and that's okay. But I really enjoy it, especially stuff like this. Doing these little experiments here in the Carpoos Mining Lab, it brings me great joy. And hopefully other people like this stuff too, which is maybe why you're watching this video, who knows? So, there's gonna be a part two, guys. I wish I could go further today, but I only have a 350 watt power supply. I didn't really realize we could push it this far. So I'm gonna order a 600, and we're going to pick up where we left off here today. But our official results, 17.1 terahashes a second. We're using 343.9 watts. ASIC temp number one is 67.8. ASIC temp number two is 60.3. And the VR temp is 78 degrees. I'm proud of this thing. I love the Zyber HE. It is a fantastic device. And it's capable, obviously, of putting down some serious numbers. Because again, Nerd QX++, it's the same exact chips, by the way. And you rarely ever see those things getting 8.5 terahashes a second, which is exactly what the Zyber HE is doing right now. So say what you will about this thing, guys. I love it. I'm a big fan of the Zyber HE. I think she's got more in the tank. I really do. But we will find out on part two of the Zyber 8G overclocking adventure. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate the support as always. Check back for a future video with more Zyber 8G overclocking excitement. Who knows how far this thing can go? My goal is 18, but maybe we'll get 19, who knows? So that's all I got for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time.